Shabbat Shalom. I'm so glad that you're here, and welcome to all of you watching all over the world on the internet. It's so nice to have you here at Congregation Beth Hillel. We're going to have a great time here today. Wow, we are really, really close to Shavuot. It is very, very soon. The anticipation is really building. We're in the upper counts of the counting of the Omer. And so, boy, that means watch out. Good things are happening. Good things are about to happen. Remember, because Shavuot and the ending of the counting of the Omer represents a completion. It represents a, a maturation. Uh, it, it represents a kind of a graduation of sorts and, uh, and a new season that, that begins, even symbolically, in our lives. Shavuot is one of the big holidays. We'll talk about that a little bit later. It's just going to be wonderful, uh, certainly here at Bethel or wherever you are. So thank you so much for, for watching. Please don't forget to press that like button and subscribe. And uh, for all of you here, make sure you also subscribe. Okay, in any case, leading us in our service day is going to be Daniel. He'll open us in a word of prayer. So uh, again, Barachim Habaim, welcome to you, and Shabbat Shalom. Yes, yes, welcome to Congregation Beth Hillel House of Praise. To all of our first-time guests and visitors, whether uh, here in person or joining us via the live stream, welcome. It's an honor to share in the blessing of this Shabbat with you. So as Kevin said, we'll enter in this service and dedicate it to the Lord with prayer. So let's bow our hearts and our, our heads to the Lord. Avinu Malkeno, our Father, our King. Lord, we delight in this Shabbat. We thank you for this opportunity to enter into your rest. Lord, we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth, to worship you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Lord, we dedicate this service to you. Let it glorify your name and your name alone. We lift up any prayer requests that might be in our hearts tonight. We bless you and we praise you. And it's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. And let's stand and welcome in Shabbat with a praise song. Enjoy. seated. We'll now enter the liturgy portion of this worship service. Please join in where it says congregation. Baruch Adonai 
Bless the Lord who is blessed. Blessed be the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, honored, and exalted be the name of the King of Kings, the Holy One. Blessed be He who is the first and the last. Besides Him there is no God. Extol Him in the heavens. Lord is His name. Rejoice before His face. His name is lifted up beyond all blessing and praise. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Let the name of the Lord be blessed forever and ever. We'll continue now with Vishamru. Uh, Vishamru is very special. Like many of the chants we're reciting today, it comes straight from Torah, specifically Exodus 31, 16, and 17, where the Lord gave the commandment to Moses for the children of Israel to keep the Sabbath holy. And when we meditate on this chant, we're also reminded that it was God who did in fact create the heavens and the earth. Ki sheshet yamim asadonai et hashemayim v'taretz uvayom hashvi shavat vayinafash. The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever that in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day He ceased from work and rested. Now begin a responsive reading. I'll read the first paragraph. We'll read the second paragraph together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who by your word brings on the evening twilight, and by your wisdom opens the gates of heaven. With understanding you order the cycles of time and vary the seasons, setting the stars and their courses in the sky according to your will. You create the day and night causing the light to pass away before the darkness and the darkness before the light. By your will, the day turns into night. The Lord of heavenly hosts is your name. O ever living God, rule over us forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who brings on the evening twilight. With everlasting love, you have loved the house of Israel, teaching us your Torah and precepts, your statutes and judgments. Therefore, O Lord, our God, when we lie down and when we get up, we will meditate upon your instructions and rejoice forever in the words of your Torah and in its teachings, for they are our life and sustenance. We will meditate upon them day and night. May your love never leave us. Blessed are you, O Lord, who loves your people, Israel. Amen. Please rise and join with me as we recite the watchword of Israel, the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malchuto Le'olam Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. Now for a continuation of the Shema. This is from Deuteronomy 6. I'll read it in Hebrew first, then we'll respond with the English. Vahavta et Adonai Elhecha, b'chol levavcha, v'chol nafshecha, v'chol meodecha. Vahayu hadvarim hale, asher nechim etzavcha, hayom alavavecha, v'shinantan levanecha. Continuing with the English, let's read this together. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your life, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, 
when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as reminders on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. I'll now read a summary of the Sabbath Amidah and your standing as we recite the Amidah for the word Amidah means standing. We're doing so facing a very particular direction, facing towards the eastern skies over Jerusalem. This is for many reasons. Prime among them is because in the book of Ezekiel, we read that when the Lord returns in glory, it will be over those special eastern skies of Jerusalem. Please join with me where it says, leader and congregation. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and revered God, the most high God, master of heaven and earth. He, with his word, was a shield to our forefathers, and by his voice will raise the dead, the holy God, like whom there is none, who gives rest to his people on his holy Sabbath day, because he delights in them to grant them rest. Before his presence, we will serve with fear and awe. Daily and constantly, we will thank him with the appropriate praises. He is the God to whom thanksgiving is due, the Lord of peace, who hallows the Sabbath and blesses the seventh day, and in holiness gives rest to a people filled with delights in remembrance of the creation. Our God and God of our fathers, accept our rest. Hallow us by your commandments and grant our portion your Torah. Satisfy us with your goodness and gladden us with your salvation. Purify our hearts to serve you truthfully. And in your love and favor, O Lord our God, let us inherit your holy Sabbath. And may Israel, who sanctify your name, rest thereon. Blessed are you, O Lord, who hallows the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. As our worship team returns to the Bema, for those of you watching online, we would love for you to take a moment to send a text right now to someone. Wish them a happy Shabbat Shalom. Also, for those of you here, turn to someone next to you and wish them a hearty Shabbat Shalom as well. If you've never participated in a Bethel El Shabbat service, you may see that potentially we do things a little bit differently than what you're used to. I want to assure you that raising hands in worship and clapping to the Lord is both a Jewish and a scriptural thing that we're inspired by. Psalm 47 says, clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. And in Psalm 63, Melch David said, I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. We invite you to worship the Lord with us.
Well, we've been running to the mountain, but let's take a rest and you may be seated. I'd like to call forth an usher and welcome our special guests, our visitors. This is your first time here at Congregation Bethel. Welcome. We have something for you. Will all first time visitors please raise your hand and keep it up so we can see you? Great. Keep those hands up. You'll receive a blue visitor's card, some info about our synagogue, and a name tag and a pen. Please fill that card out now and drop it in the box up front during our offering. Also, please put your name on the name tag so we can greet you by name after service. The pen is yours to keep as a gift. If you're new to Bethel and seeing our service for the first time over the internet, there's some information about our synagogue and about Messianic Judaism on our new and improved website, which is Bethelel.org. We'd also love for you to send an email to info at Bethlel.org with your name and address so we can keep you in the loop as to the exciting events happening here at the congregation. Whether you're visiting us virtually or are physically here with us today, welcome. You're now part of our mishpacha, which means family. family. Yes, he come once as a visitor and leave his family. Welcome to the mishpacha of Bethlel. Like I said, exciting things. There will not be a scripture study this Tuesday. They will resume in June because... Announcement number two, members, don't forget to meet with your Chavara this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Community is something we should never take for granted. Vacation Bible Yeshiva will be on Sunday, June 26th through Thursday, June 30th, each day from 9 to noon. All children grades pre-K, age 4, through starting 8th grade in the fall are welcome to join. Please register today, though. There is a link on our website. The Temple Teens are starting summer with tons of fun at main event this Sunday, May 29th from 1.30 to 7 p.m. We'll play unlimited laser tag, bowling, <laughs> gravity ropes, and billiards, and then enjoy a delicious dinner at cookout. See Dara for all the details. Temple Tween Tuesdays are on June 7th and June 21st. This is an awesome way for our tweens, ages 18 to 13 years old, though I don't know how they feel about being called tweens. I'm not eight sure. To 13. It's 8 to 13? 8 to 13, yeah. <laughs> not 8 to 30? 8 to 13? Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> to relax on summer evenings before scripture study with dinner, special themed activities, and free time to hang out with their friends, the cost is $5, which includes the dinner. This is from 4 to 6.45 p.m. before scripture study. Please RSVP to Sue at edu at Bethlehel.org. Our Shavuot service will be on Saturday, June 4th at 7 p.m. That will be a special, special weekend. Come on Shabbat, Friday night or Saturday, to hear Rabbi Stuart Winograd's update on the situation in Ukraine. Then come right on back Saturday evening for one of the biggies, as Rabbi Kevin mentioned. We'll be in the MJCC for Shavuot. 
we'll celebrate and receive our special Shavuot offering, and we'll be having a big dairy oneg as well. It's an amazing party, and it's one of the Lord's appointed feasts, so you will not want to miss it. Speaking of Shavuot, we need some volunteers to help with decorating. Wednesday, June 1st at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., please sign up on the office store or contact our office. Rabbi. Thank you. Tada. Shabbat shalom. Y'all Shavuot. You don't want to miss it. Again, that whole weekend. It's next weekend. You don't want to miss. Uh, and yes, we will be streaming our Shavuot services from our community center. Uh, however, if you are in town, I encourage you. This is one you want to be at. Uh, and, and again, Friday night and Saturday morning, we're having Rabbi Stuart Winograd, who's going to be giving us an update in Ukraine. He, he told me he's going to be bringing some pictures. That they've been, they were in Ukraine just this week, uh, this past week. And so Rabbi Stewart's going to really give us an update very much with the, his eyes on the ground as to, uh, as to what he's seeing, especially amongst the believing community. It's something I think you don't want to miss. It's Friday night or Saturday morning of next Shabbat. And then Saturday night, we'll be at the community center. So Friday or Saturday morning here. But Saturday night, next door at the community center for Shavuot. And that is just a, a party. It's a celebration. Uh, we're thanking God for all that he's done. It's just going to be so, it's, it's a big deal. The, the, the area is just going to be uh, decorated so beautifully. Why? Because uh, uh, it, it is tradition that Mount Sinai blossomed. It's in the middle of a desert. I've been to Mount Sinai before. It blossomed when the commandments were given to Moses. And there's a biblical basis for that as a side note. And so, uh, and so uh, consequently, we decorate the synagogue for Shavuot, and we know it is just a huge celebration. We're going to have the big dairy oneg. I think it's going to be just a lot of fun. There'll be some celebrating going on, that special Shavuot offering that, that people always bring. Uh, you know, we're to bring a special offering that's above our regular tithes uh, on Shavuot, and, uh, but it's just in proportion to how you've been blessed. There's no designated amount. So we just come and we, we offer our thanksgiving to God, and we're like, wow, it is the fulfillment of these days of the counting of the Omer. So in any case, that's Shavuot. That's not even my announcement. <laughs> okay, we are starting our new members classes. I'm really excited to announce that. On Tuesday, July 12th, this is the first week we're going to mention it and just put up the sign-up sheet uh, at 7 o'clock. Uh, and the classes run for seven consecutive Tuesday nights. So if you've been attending Bethel for a while or watching us online for a good amount of time, please sign up for the classes. We would love to have you. We love new mishpacha. Uh, our congregation really, uh, we're, we're coming back around here and, and things are growing, have been really growing lately uh, as we've kind of exiting the, the pandemic season, not, not saying it's all, you understand what I mean. Uh, and, uh, and so it's really so nice as we're rebuilding things, getting things going again, and the machine is moving. And I'm excited about some other things that are coming up in the next number of months. Uh, I see the gift shop reopening. I see our own egg starting back up again. So we are in the process of getting our sisterhood, our men's group. A lot of things are, are in the process. We're working on them. We're working on them, y'all. It's just getting it, getting the machine going again. And we're, we're, we're very, very excited. We, we have a great membership here in the congregation. So if you're not a member, you feel the Lord is calling you here, sign up on the office door for the new members classes, and you can take them at the end of the, them. You can decide whether you're not, you would like to join uh, and if we would like to have you join. Uh, and so that is uh, coming up on Tuesday, July 12th at 7 o'clock p.m. I also want to uh, give a quick shout out and welcome to our YMJA group uh, that is here. It is so good to have you guys here. Welcome. Well, it's important that we all continue to do as the scripture says in Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, especially in times like these, as we were just talking about, your financial gifting is of particular importance. Visitors want to mention here, we do not solicit your tithes, but if you'd like to bless us with a love offering, we pray you are blessed in return for your generosity. For those of you who are watching online, you can have your bank send a check through your online bill pay, or you can simply mail your check to Beth Hillel, 950 Pine Grove Road, Roswell, Georgia, 30075. Finally, you can also click the link below your screen in the description box to give you a credit card or scan the QR code on the screen with your smartphone camera to give online. 
In just a moment, our musicians will share a song to give you time to click the link in for those of us here uh, to bring your offering unto the Lord up into one of our offering boxes, which are here up front. And visitors, this is that time we mentioned before to drop the card that you filled out in the box up front. Luke 6, 38, we read, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I'll now pray over these tithes and offerings. Abba, Father, Lord, we thank you for your blessings to us, for your generosity, Lord. We give these tithes and offerings unto you for the furthering of your kingdom, for the furthering of your purposes. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to give, for the desire to give, Lord. We thank you so much for the gift and the giver. It's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And you shall know that I am. shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and my people shall not be ashamed. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God. And none else in you shall know that I am. And my people shall not be ashamed. And my people shall not be ashamed. And my people shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. We will now enter into the Torah portion of this worship service. Please rise when the ark is opened. And out of respect for the Torah, please remain in the sanctuary while the ark is open. I'd like to call up our cantor, Bruch Ben Spi. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forward, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to sing in Hebrew what Daniel just read for us in English. If this is your first Torah service, you're going to hear of blessings that are thousands of years old. Some Yeshua heard and probably sang in his synagogue over 2,000 years ago. And if you know these melodies, please join along with me. If not, close your eyes and enjoy the timelessness and sweetness of this part of your Jewish roots. Vahi ben so aharon, vayomer Moshe, kumah Adonai, veafu su hoyevecha, veanu su misanecha, mipanecha, ki mitzia tetsehe Torah. Ki mitzion tetsehe Torah Urvahar Adonai Merushalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Le'amo Yisrael, big to shahato. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Unique is our God, great is our Lord, holy and revered is his name. Exalt the Lord with me and let us extol his name together with the Shema. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. 
Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adoneinu, Kadosh Veino Rashomo, God Lulad Naiti, Uroma Shomo Yachdav. Who can be compared to you, O Lord, among the gods? Who can be compared to you? Glorious in holiness, awesome in praises, doing wonders. From the song of praise, Moses and the children of Israel sang to the Lord. From Exodus 15:11, Mi chamocha, Mi chamocha, by Lihi Madonai, Mi chamocha, Nedahava Kodesh. No ratei lord, o se efele. No ratei lord, o se efele. Yahamo Daniel ben David la Torah. He who blessed our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he bless Daniel ben David, who has come up to honor God in the Torah. May the Holy One bless him and his family, and send blessing and prosperity on all the works of his hands, and let us all say, Amen. Thank you, Bruce. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'lam Vahed, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'lam Vahed, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam, Asher bachar banu mikol hamim, v'natananu et torato, ba'uch et adonai, nuten ha-torah. Amen. Bless the Lord who is blessed. Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who chose us from all peoples and gave to us the Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Today is the 27th day of the Yar in the year 5782. We'll be reading from Numbers 3, verses 5 through 10. The Lord said to Moses, Bring the tribe of Levi and present them to Aharon, the priest, to assist him. They are to perform duties for him and for the whole community at the tent of meeting by doing the work of the tabernacle. They are to take care of all the furnishings of the tent of meeting, fulfilling the obligations of the Israelites by doing the work of the tabernacle. Give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are the Israelites who are to be given wholly to him. Appoint Aharon and his sons to serve as priests. Anyone else who approaches the sanctuary is to be put to death. Amen. Haftarah reading is from Hosea 2. We'll be reading 16 through 20. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the Baals from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, the birds in the sky, and the creatures that move along the ground. Bow and sword in battle I will abolish from the land so that all may lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice and love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Brit Hadashah reading is from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 15 through 20. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they are all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Amen. Amen. Ba'uch ha'tadonai Eloheinu melech ha'alam Asher natan lanu t'rat emet V'chai e'olam neta betuchinu Ba'uch ha'tadonai Nuten ha'torah Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth 
and life everlasting planted in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Let us continue with the blessing over the new covenant scriptures. Baruch atah Eloheinu melech olam, asher nantan lanu devar emet, v'chaye olam natah betochenu. Baruch atah Adonai, no tame brit chadashah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the word of truth and planted among us life eternal. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. V'zot ha-Torah ha-Moshe lifne b'nei Yisrael api Adonai v'yad Moshe. Now join through with the congregation response. This is the Torah which Moses placed before the children of Israel. It is in accord with the Lord's command by the hand of Moses. A tree of life it is for those who take hold of it, and blessed are the ones who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Long life is in its right hand, in its left are riches and honor. The Lord was pleased for the sake of his righteousness to render the Torah great and glorious. And now please join with me with the beautiful Eitz Chaim and Hashivenu. Eitz Chaim hi l'machazikim ba v'tom chera me'usha Shalom Adonai Turn us, Lord, to you and let us return. Renew, renew our days. Renew our days, Abba, as of old. Amen. And when the ark rested, Moses would say, Return, O Lord, to the myriads of Israel's families. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Clothe your priests with righteousness. May those who've experienced your faithful love shout for joy. Baruch Hashem. For the sake of your servant David, do not delay the return of your Messiah. I give you good instruction. Do not forsake my Torah. And now let us bless God for giving us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu HaDevahar Hachai Mashiach Yeshua Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who's given us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. And let us say, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, sir. Tada Rabba Baruch Daniel. Wow, wonderful. It's, it's interesting, you know, the Haft Torah portion that you gave from Hosea is, uh, is the basis in many ways, really, of the, of the seven hakafot, the circles that the, the woman circles around the man during a Jewish wedding ceremony. Uh, it's the seven ways in which God betrothes himself to his bride Israel. Uh, and so it's a beautiful portion. Always makes me think of weddings. Uh, I did a, a wedding a couple weeks ago. I got another wedding in about four weeks. So it's, I guess it's that time. Uh, in any case, we're going to be dismissing our four, five, and six-year-olds to Torah Tot 7, 8, 9 to Club Maccabee in just a moment. But first, we want to ask the Lord to bless them. Avinu Shabbat Shemayim, Father in heaven, humbly we come before you, Lord. And Lord, we want to ask your touch uh, on a few different things. God, first, please touch. And we still very much remember the whole situation going on in the Ukraine. We ask you to please... 
be with the people there, Lord. Uh, God, especially so many people have been uh, just have to have like a PTSD from all the all the fighting. Uh, I pray for healing, healing, God, in your touch. I, I, I pray for a, a revival amongst the people there, and uh, and and that they would turn to you, Lord God. Uh, that the Russians would turn to you. I, I pray for just a, just a, a massive outpouring. Sometimes conflict can create uh, uh, a searching. Uh, so God, please show up even in the midst of that chaos. Uh, so Lord, and protect the innocent. Thank you, God, for our Yeladim. Speaking of the innocent, uh, we ask your touch on them. We also take a moment, Lord, and we pray for that community in Texas with a horrible tragedy uh, earlier this week, God. And uh, Lord, I know that like many, my heart is just absolutely broken uh, to hear about that horrific horrific uh, act of hate, uh, which is not the first one even in the last few weeks, really. Uh, and so, God, please, I, I pray for your comfort for those who are mourning uh, in Texas and really across our whole country, uh, for, for the sweet little ones, Lord. Uh, and so, God, Lord, we need you. It's very clear our country needs you, Lord. Please turn your, turn your face toward us, Lord, and let us turn our face toward you. Lord, thank you again for our kids. Please bless them, the teachers and the parents for bringing their kids to the Lord's house. In Yeshua's name, amen. Okay, four to nine-year-olds, you're dismissed at this time. We're gonna enter in the next phase of our worship service. You let the Lord bless you.
presence in this place. We ask you to continue this anointing on our rabbis who delivers these words from your word. Let no one leave here without first conforming more to the image of your son, Yeshua. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oof. Wow. Be man. seated. Yeah, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you, worshipers. My goodness. Wow. I know my God is in control. Man, I tell you what, you're right. Woo, you don't always feel him, but he's there. He's there. You know, he, he doesn't require for you to feel him. He requires for you to trust in him. And, uh, and through the fiercest battle, doesn't matter what it is, uh, DC, he is always in control. And I'm so thankful to that. Woo, thankful for that. Mm, boy, that was a blessing. Those gals can sing, too, can't they? They really can't sing. Wow, they're really good. Woo, man. Thank you so much. Boy, you could tell that they're putting their all into it. That's what we should do when worshiping the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, boy, I tell you what, the, the time is nearly up. The time is nearly up. It's almost Shavuot. And so, my goodness, time flies, doesn't it, uh, Daniel? 
Baruch Hatzad and I, Lohenu Melachala, Mashir Kitshanu, Bamitzvata, Vitzivanu, Asfirat Omer, Amen. Blessed are you, God, King of the universe, who made us holy with his commandments and commanded us on the counting of the Omer. Amen. Today is the 42nd day of the Omer, which is six weeks. It's hard to believe we're six weeks into the counting of the Omer. We're almost at the 50th day, which is. Nachon, Nachon, Achim, and Ve'achayot. Yes, Shavuot, that's right. So what I always like to do, let's go ahead and start it. I like to show you pictures from Israel as we count the Omer with the different slides and amazing places all over the land of Israel. As a side note, those of you watching from home, I know that we've had a little glitch. Some of the slides are skipping just online. I don't know why, but that's okay. It's just uh, more of an incentive if you're local to come on in. <laughs> but in any case, if you're watching remotely, we love you. Wow, that was our keyboard player there. Independence Hall there, and then look at that there. The Robinsons, he was our head usher. I walk on air periodically. Uh, that's uh, the Golan, that's me in Israel a long time ago. Yeah, uh, Rabbi Avi Mizraki right there, and uh, in Jerusalem, beautiful. There's Rabbi E. Uh, by the Western Wall. He's doing better, by the way. Thank you for your prayers, Rabbi Eitan Shishkoff. Really beautiful scenes from Israel. Some amazing things in place. My mom. That's my mom of blessed memory. You know, if you, if you want to know how I turned out, you look at that picture. He tells you everything you need to know. It can be very dangerous to, to have grown up in that household. Uh, <laughs> so I was, had, had to be obedient. There's the Temple Mount right there and Oh, just beautiful there, you see, in the, the Qumran area, really amazing. It's a mustard seed. Look at that. It's just really amazing. Uh, and uh, finally, the, the 42nd day of the Omer. This is uh, some folks who are there. We see, I think Cindy, Cindy's here today. Yeah, I, I put a little uh, kind of a slide of a couple of Cindy, couple of Maria there. And so it looks just like a lot of fun, doesn't it? I mean, uh, and so it's special. Israel, thank you so much, Tom. We can pull that up. The 42nd day of the Omer. And wow, we're almost there. 50th, you know what it is. We have one more Shabbat. We're, next Shabbat, we count it's the 49th day. Okay, we're not like, not quite there next Shabbat, but almost. You get to see 49 of the slides. Only the 50th is left to go and waiting for us on Shavuot. The 50th will be shown, of course, at the community center, but next week, next Shabbat, 49 in here. All right. Oh boy, time flies. Well, you know what this weekend is? We've got a lot of things going on this weekend. This weekend has Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Day, which is the biblical, or rather the Hebrew calendar anniversary of when Israel retook Jerusalem, the entirety of Jerusalem in 1967. Uh, that's, a, that's certainly an amazing thing. It, but it's also here in the United States, it's Memorial Day weekend, of course, and, uh, and so I know a lot of you have off Monday, off of work on Monday, and uh, school is, I think, mostly out at this point, but uh, Memorial Day weekend, and this weekend, aside from the hot dogs and the picnics, please take a, a moment to consider the true purpose of this holiday, uh, Memorial Day. Uh, to remember those who perished while defending our country. That's what Memorial Day is really all about. Uh, and uh, it's, it's interesting because while all of us here, all of us here benefit from the sacrifice of these heroes, those who served in our armed forces in particular, and their families for that matter, uh, deserve special praise this weekend. Well, now, why is that? Well, of course, yes, this is Memorial Day and not Veterans Day. Veterans Day, when we honor specifically our veterans. Nonetheless, anybody who joined the, air, uh, the uh, military, the armed services, anybody who joined put their lives on the line. And they were willing to make the ultimate sacrifice if needed. So I just want to take a moment out of our service this weekend to honor those who lost their lives defending freedom. Uh, and I'd also like to honor all veterans. And something I want to do today is all relatives of veterans. Because, you know, when you're a relative of a veteran, you are, uh, your loved one is, is in harm's way. I don't care if they're just uh, pushing papers in, in Leavenworth, uh, Kansas. The, the, the point is, is that 
Uh, you never know. When you sign on that dotted line to join the service, you never know. Uh, and so the family members also are, are, are subject to uh, the strains and stresses of a loved one who potentially could be in harm's way. And, uh, and, and I think that honoring them honors the memory of those who gave their lives. So at this time, I want to ask for all veterans, and if you are related to a veteran, please stand, and we together want to honor the memory of those who gave it all. So any veterans or family members, wow, look, look at how many people have sacrificed uh, not just the people sitting, but even you standing looking around to each other. Let's, let's just give thanks to the Lord for these heroes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much for, for your service, those of you who are veterans, and for those of you who are family members of veterans, thank you for uh, the, the trials of having your loved one uh, as a veteran, whether it was your spouse or a parent, uh, or even in some cases a grandparent. Uh, you know, they, they, they put it all on the line. And I've been thinking about these heroes this week. You know, it's Memorial Day weekend. And I've been contemplating the people who gave it all and, and, and what it takes inside of somebody. Uh, of course, there are wars all over the place right now. There are people giving it all. And over in Ukraine, you know what's going on there. And, 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 and I've thought deeply about how do people come up with something within them to make that ultimate sacrifice uh, and, and then the, the Lord ministered to me that these, the, these great ones were actually presenting themselves as, a, as an example for all of us. That which drives somebody to be willing, to be willing. Nobody wants to, you know, listen, I, one of the American generals said, I don't want to give my life. He said, I, want you, I don't want you soldiers to give your life for your country. I want... You're the other guy to give their life for their country is <laughs> what he told the, his soldiers. But nonetheless, the point is, is that there's something that, uh, that drives somebody to be willing to give their life for their country. It's, it's, it, and and this, this something within them is, is something that I think that is an example for all of us. One of the things I enjoy doing periodically, and I, you, can, you can find them all over YouTube, is I love listening to the Congressional Medal of Honor winners or, or recipients. Maybe it's not a winner, it's a recipient. Uh, people who have received the Congressional Medal of Honor just for ex extraordinary courage in the, in the line of duty. And of course, most of the Congressional Medal of Honors are, got, are given after someone has passed away, of course, when they were killed in action. Uh, but there are a few. There are a few that are given to people who are living. And, and I like watching those ceremonies. Sometimes I'll just, I'll just watch and, and to see them presented, that, that ribbon with that medallion on it, you know, and the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's a pretty intense kind of a thing. And, and then they, they, they give... Every Congressional Medal of Honor winner, you can go look at it online, there's a, an account, usually it's at least a full page, of exactly why it is that they're receiving the Congressional Medal of Honor. And it's usually an account of a battle or a, a certain thing in warfare where, where they did something beyond the call and heroic. And, and, and it's, it's always at their presentation ceremonies, which is done typically by the President of the United States, uh, regardless of the administration at the time, they present these and put these on these heroes. And, uh, and when they do so, and after they read, I mean, you read what they did, and, it, and sometimes it's just like, oh my gosh, how, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very humbling, and it's awesome. And, and then after they read that, and after a few minutes, they give the person an opportunity to talk, to say something, those who are still living, of course. And, and, and what is one of the things that seems to be consistent in their stories, as, I, as I've watched a number of these over the many years, and I have found a fairly consistent theme in the speeches of those who 
are honored with the Congressional Medal of Honor for valor in, in, in warfare. And here's the thread that I, I have heard just so many times from so many of the recipients that it's not, it can't be coincidence. None of them felt like they were the ones that deserved the recognition. It's just so interesting to me. None of them, you know, none of them, was, none of them went up there and said, well, it was really hard, but I, I did what I needed to do. It was, it was a challenge. I mean, you could have said it in even a semi-humble way, but like almost to a, to a man or woman, they're like, no, 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 I don't, I don't deserve this recognition. Almost all of them say, almost all of them say that they did, they just did what anyone would have done in their place. This is what you hear in their speeches. They say, listen, what I did was nothing extraordinary. Anybody in my place would have done the same thing. And they also say the one, typically they say the one who deserves credit is so-and-so who, who gave their life. And, and they'll point to somebody else maybe who was in the battle who lost their life. And they say, that's the real hero. And, and they're always deflecting credit. And uh, honestly, uh, and, saying, and saying anybody would have done what I did if they were in my place. And yet we all know that that is not true. It just isn't. It's not true. At the same time, in feeling this way, they're demonstrating to us what we should be aspiring to. They're demonstrating to us what we should be aspiring to in our own lives. It's, it's awfully humbling, it really is. To hear these stories, it's just like, wow. Uh, boy, I, I thought that I did a, a good deed today when I helped some lady across the street, you know? <laughs> it's like, well, listen, that's great, but... Uh, there's, there's more left to be done here. W you know, what, what's inside? John chapter 15, please. Yochanan, John chapter 15. Wow, it's inspirational. My gosh, it's inspirational to hear these stories. It is uh, to hear of the stories of those who gave it all. Assumably, those who were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor as well, to hear their stories. And usually a family member receives theirs if they had passed away in the battle. And, uh, and to hear their story, sometimes it's just, it, doesn't, it seems like a superhero story. John chapter 15, verse 12. What did Mos Moshiach Yeshua say? He said, this is my commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Hmm. As I read that, Joe, you know, it really to me sounds like Memorial Day, right? Isn't, I mean, isn't that almost like the definition of Memorial Day? Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. That's what Memorial Day is. We're remembering those who, were, who, who gave it all, who laid down their lives for all of us. In being so heroic, these soldiers laid down their lives for their friends. It's a pretty profound principle, really. These men and women literally gave everything, everything, they gave everything, 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 everything they could possibly give for others, for you and me. Their sacrifice is worth memorializing. Hmm? Memorial Day. It's worth memorializing that sacrifice. Now, I want to be clear about something. <laughs> I'm not... I'm not asking you to lay down your life for your friends. But Yeshua is. He's telling us that this is the ultimate expression of love. The ultimate expression of love. Now sure, some are asked to lay down their lives Literally, 
like these soldiers that we are think about during Memorial Day or, or, or even like those heroic teachers in Texas this week who laid down their lives for others. Some are called to do that, but not many. But all of us are called to make sacrifices that are not easy for us. All of us are called to that. Every one of us, you watching online, everybody listening via podcast, all of us are called to make sacrifices It only makes sense that the closer we come to laying down our lives for others, the closer we get to the greatest love. Why? Yeshua says, greater love has no one than this. So that's, he gives us the the ranking, the rating. That's number 10 on love, right? That's number 10, laying down your life for your friend. So the the more we get within us a sacrificial laying down of our lives for others, the closer we get to perfect love. Honestly, straightforwardly, lovingly, most people don't think of it that way. Most people like the vast majority of people don't think of it that way. What do they do? Here's the word. They compartmentalize. They compartmentalize. What am I talking about? I'm going to explain this because as the Lord was kind of revealing this to me and showing me and teaching me, uh, it became clear the nuanced difference, but it's a, although nuanced in some ways, it's, It is a dividing line. It's a critical, critical difference here that that affects and shapes all of our lives. They compartmentalize. Most people compartmentalize. It's like, well, I know I need to give back, so I'll do this or that. It's a mitzvah. It's a mindset that believes that yes, you need to sacrifice for others, but it implicitly implies that you can do what you want, be as selfish as you want, so long as you don't forget to give back. (laughs) Do you see how that's compartmentalized? Do you see it's it's a very nuanced thing, but I'm telling you, it's a big thing. We're going to dig into this a little bit where you can have your own, it's me, you know, you could, most people love three people the most, you know, in their, in their lives, they love three the most, me, myself, and I. <laughs> and, and, and as they do, somehow they justify that. They justify their self-centeredness by saying, oh, well, I'm going to give back. I'm going to sacrifice It's very compartmentalized. And and honestly, even if it's well-intentioned, even the words, think about the words give back. Even the words give back subtly implies that you can somehow make up for what you've been given. I've been given so much, so I'm going to give back back. There's a subtle implication there. Now listen, I'm not saying it's a bad way to look at it. I'm not saying anybody who says give back is like wrong or selfish. It's not what I'm, it's not my point. I'm asking you to think about it from a slightly different angle, a slightly different perspective. Most people, because honestly, most people don't even do that. Most people are just self-centered in life. And by self-centered, I don't even imply that they're like, all walking around all haughty and just like always wanting everything to be about them and look at me and hey, pay me attention. It might, the self-centeredness might be just sitting on the couch or sitting in front of a computer screen, sitting in front of a television. Yeah. That, that's self, that, can, that can be self-centeredness, you understand? So most people don't even 
give back. But at the core, I'm asking for you to think today, what is your mindset? What is your mindset as you think about these things, as you contemplate? Get ready for this question. I'm going to tell you, when, when the Lord spoke to me this question, it was like, whoa. I actually stopped at my keyboard and, went, and, and just stopped for a minute and thought about it. Get ready for this question. It's an important question. When, it, when it's talking about give, sacrificing for others, is it something that you do? Or is it who you are? Is it something you do? Or is it who you are? Wow, man, that question cuts. Romans chapter 12. Because if we want to follow Messiah, the answer needs to be the latter. If we truly want to be more like Yeshua, people wear the bracelet WWJD or people say, oh, I want to be more like Yeshua. Okay. Well, if you want to be more like Yeshua, it needs to become more and more who we are. It needs to become more and more who we are, not what we do when we are sacrificing for others. Wow, it's a deep concept. You know this scripture, but in light of what we're talking about, I want you to see the nuanced difference. Romans 12, 1 says, I urge you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Do you see here, do you see here? God is not asking for us to make a sacrifice. That, I mean, that's not, that's not the words here that are used. This is not the, the, the making a sacrifice is good. But this, God is not asking us here in Romans 12 to make a sacrifice. It's interesting because in so many ways, God has made it so much easier for us than before Yeshua came. It's so much easier for us in the Tanakh, in the Tanakh, what did we have to do? We literally had to make sacrifices in the temple. I mean, my gosh, uh, imagine you're, you're living in the, down south in the desert and you, and, you, and you lie to your spouse and you're like, oh boy, uh, when, when's the next bus to Jerusalem here? I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go sacrifice. <laughs> we need to buy a turtle dove or a goat or something. I, I gotta go up, man. I gotta, I mean, I mean you think of it. it was, this was not easy. It was not easy here, friends, to, to sacrifice. It was hard. It was laborious. It's so much easier now to make our sacrifice. Because why? Because we can accept the blood atonement of Messiah Yeshua to cover our sins and fulfill the Torah requirements for that blood atonement. And so Baruch Hashem, thank you, Lord, for making it so much easier for us to present our sacrifice unto the Lord for forgiveness of sins. And so in so many ways, it's just much, much easier God made it for us. Fair enough, true. At the same time, in some ways, wait for it, wait for it, y'all. In some ways, the standard is much higher now. It's much higher now than even it might have been then. How so? Because no longer is God asking for us to make a sacrifice. God is asking for us to be a sacrifice. Which is really easier. It's interesting. I think the harder thing is to be a sacrifice. I think that's harder even than schlepping a, a goat up to Jerusalem. And that's the standard I'm reading. Now, most people will not be asked to literally sacrifice their lives. The point here is a mindset. Some people, you know this, 
if I, if I started going around this room, you could give me a name of somebody you know who has a mindset of sacrifice. Everybody here knows somebody said, oh boy, a mindset of sacrifice, yep. <laughs> different names come to mind. Honestly, hey, forthrightly, different names come to mind for me too that I think about. I think different people have just a mindset of sacrifice. I gotta be honest with you, most don't. Most, well over 50%, probably over 80%. I'm talking even believers, y'all. I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about full mindset of being a sacrifice. It's a totally different mindset than making a sacrifice in your life. I'm not talking literal, literal like bring a, a goat. That I'm talking about within your life. For example, I got to tell you, my, my music and, and youth ministry heads, Mark and Dara, may, they may not do all the, always things perfectly. I don't always agree with everything that they do. I'll tell you that forthrightly. But friends, if there's a need, they don't hesitate to give of themselves. You all know that. They don't hesitate. It is in their nature. They live as a sacrifice. They do this when their family has a need. They do this when their friends have a need, when their congregation have a need. They're just intuitively, immediately willing to help. Willing, not just to help, willing to sacrifice. You, you know this, this is who they are. They may not make always perfect decisions about everything. But by gosh, no one doubts if they care. They don't make sacrifices. They are sacrifices. And beloved, that's what we are all called to do. Wow, man, RK, Rabbi Kevin, you're putting up a high standard right there. I didn't write it. In fact, Rabbi Shaul urges us to do so. What does he say in Romans 12? I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice. He urges you. And that, as a, as a total side note, that's one of the reasons why, say, Mark and Dare are deeply loved here. And by no means are they the only ones. There are others at Beth Hillel like this too, who just mm, are it. Ephesians 5, please. But this should come, this whole point really should come as no surprise to us. Why? This is precisely, exactly what Yeshua did for us. This is exactly the attitude, the mode, the state of being that the Messiah himself was for us, for you and for me. Should we imitate him? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Ephesians 5, please, verse 1. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love just as Messiah also loved us and gave himself up for us as an offering and sacrifice to God for a fragrant aroma. Wow. Whew. So read it closely, right? What does it say? It says, we are to imitate God like children. You know how children can sometimes imitate their, their fathers or their moms. We're to imitate God. And what exactly are we to imitate? How Yeshua loved us so much that he gave himself up for us as a sacrifice to God. That's what Messiah Yeshua did. He gave himself up as a sacrifice. S scripture said we should be imitators of this. That's what we're to imitate. Wow, phew. That's a, pretty high, that's a pretty high standard. Yes, it is. He literally gave his life. 
He literally gave his life. But listen, none of us are perfect. See, here's, here's something. As, as I was contemplating this message and I was thinking and praying through it, and, and I thought, wow. And, and reading about this, you know, Damien, I'm like, that standard is just, it's so, it's so high. It's, 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 it's so almost intimidating. And it seems so far for most of us. It seems unrealistic almost. It's just so much it's it's so much you know how can this how can we even approach this really because none of us are perfect and none of us are yeshua i get that i get that i get that at the same time part of coming to god's house part of coming to god's house is to be more conformed like daniel prayed to the image of god and his son, to be more conformed to the image of his son. That's part of why you come here, right? In in other words, every time, see, this is this is kind of like a little, it's it's very much connected to this, but it's a little side teaching. Every time you walk through those doors, everybody, every time, or or, or for that matter, if you're watching on, on the stream, every time you do so. We should be seeking to change something within us. And the change that I'm looking for in this message is not some kind of a surface change. It's not something even that I want and I expect for you to just wake up tomorrow and just feel different and say, wow, I'm suddenly a living sacrifice. That was pretty nifty how that happened. No, it's, it's almost assuredly not going to happen like that. It takes intentionality. And it's oftentimes, wait for it, an extraordinarily slow process. It's not overnight, typically. It is a slow process where you are changed and transitioned from this from this self-centered person to becoming a living sacrifice it just doesn't generally happen over nights and honestly it's most commonly manifested in our close relationships that's where you see the tire hit the road on this question about whether or not you are a, a sacrifice as opposed to making a sacrifice. Oftentimes in our closest relationships, if you're married, <laughs> it's being asked to do the dishes <laughs> and doing them. Not because you think your spouse is owed it or that they have done things for you so you need to give back. But rather, because it's simply in your heart to do so. An even higher level of this would be to do the dishes before you're asked to do the dishes. <laughs> and you don't do the dishes to score a point or because you want to win favor. It's because it's just who you are. And here's the key. Ooh, boy. Here's college level on this one. You should still gain fulfillment even if your sacrifice is not recognized or even cared about. Whew, that's a tough one. You see, now that's where you kind of find out motives. That's where you find out a little bit, what's your intent? Are, are you, are you uh, making a sacrifice or are you being a sacrifice? That's, that's where you kind of get some delineation on that one. That's, now that's college level, fair enough, right? But, but sometimes, and you all have done this, where you do something for somebody and they don't recognize it or maybe they don't care, 
Or even worse, I know, you've, you've heard the expression, no good deed goes left unpunished. <laughs> Sometimes you do something for somebody and, and, and you, you, you get grief because of, it, because of it. Man, that is incredibly demotivating. That is incredible. But what is it? You've got to have that within you. See, you've got to, to move forward in your spiritual walk. We have to mature, this is the word, in our spiritual walk to the point where that doesn't bother us. We still want to be a sacrifice, even if it's not even noticed. Even if it's not even noticed. Every once in a while, it's, it's interesting, every once in a while I'll catch somebody doing something at Beth Hillel. Some just, it can be a small thing. Um, so, um, there was somebody mopping a floor or something because something spilled in, in, in the kitchen or a bathroom and I happened to walk in and I see them with the mop, right? It's like, oh, rabbi. And, and, and I think to myself, Wow, okay. I'm impressed. I am impressed. I, but they weren't asked to do this, and, and, and they weren't looking for recognition. They did it because it's who they are. It's like, wow, man, that's, that's impressive. It was beautiful. It's beautiful to see when that, those kinds of things happen. You know what I'm talking about. Now, honestly, at first, at first, Y'all, and I'm giving you kind of some steps to grow in your walk. Honestly, at first, it has to be profoundly intentional <laughs> because it just doesn't come natural to, to live as a living sacrifice. It just doesn't come natural. You have to be incredibly intentional. Listen, you're here or you're hearing this message so why not try to start making a change in your life? Allow this time to make a difference in your life. Be intentional. What am I talking about? Seek to be a sacrifice. The, the, way, the way you start your journey toward becoming a sacrifice is often to make a sacrifice. Now listen, I've, I've talked about the fact that making a sacrifice and being a sacrifice are different, and they are. At the same time, if you're, and most folks, are, we're, we're so far away from being a sacrifice, that a way to get closer to that and to start going in that direction is to start intentionally making a sacrifice. In other words, it's unlikely that you're going to be today just about uh, be an opera singer and, 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 and all you sing is me, 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 me. <laughs> and then tomorrow you wake up and you're like, you, 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 you. <laughs> it's very unlikely. No, there have got to be steps in between. And if you're, and if you're kind of not been a particularly self-sacrificial person, then the first step is intentionally, consciously, Making a sacrifice. I said we need to be a sacrifice and not just make a sacrifice. I stand by that. But if we're so far away, the start to becoming a sacrifice is to make a sacrifice. And you can choose to do that intentionally. That's a choice you can make. And, and yes, listen, trust me, there are plenty of opportunities. You will find opportunities in life to be a sacrifice to others. Yeshua sacrificed everything for us. You will find opportunities if you are looking for them. If you're open to them, you will find opportunities to be a sacrifice. Sure, we have plenty of opportunities even here at Beth Hillel. We, we talked today. There's a sign-up sheet for this Wednesday to help in the Shavuot to decorating. You probably were not planning on doing that this Wednesday. Well, it's a, oh, it's a sacrifice. We need help in our, here in our greeting ministry, our sound ministry, our visual ministry, just to name a few. But I'm, I'm not just talking about Beth Hillel. I'm talking about your personal life at home, with your parents or with your kids, with your spouse, with your friends, with your teacher, with your boss at work. Oh, no, Rabbi. No, say it ain't so. 
You didn't just ask me to, to be and to make a sacrifice for my boss. Oh, yeah, I think I just did. <laughs> that was a little Jerry Clower. I don't know where that came from. Some of you know. <laughs> that could be made into a meme very easily. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's on YouTube. It's sad. <laughs> and remember this when talking about a sacrifice. Think about the word. Think about the word sacrifice. That means it's not necessarily convenient or easy for you. Even to make a sacrifice isn't necessarily easy or convenient for you. So, so let me just give you an understanding of sacrifice. Working hard on a project, working hard on a project during work time is not a sacrifice. Sorry, that's not a sacrifice. I'm working hard at work. Good, you should. That's no sacrifice. Now, working hard on a project after five o'clock, okay, now that's a sacrifice. You see? When you're giving up something, mowing the lawn, <laughs> if it's your proportional share of the chores, is not really a sacrifice. But sweeping the garage might be, if that's not typically what you do, what you do is part of your chores. Okay, now that might be a sacrifice. Do you see? Sometimes we call things that are, we call things sacrifices that are not. They're just hard work that we're supposed to do. Hmm. Encouraging somebody may not be a sacrifice, but doing so when you're exhausted is a sacrifice. Yeah. You, you don't feel like it. You're tired. And yet somebody needs it, and you're just like, Oh, and then you go in, you know, it's going to be okay. The Lord's going to help. And, and there, you, okay, you, now that's a sacrifice. Right? It's not that doing any of these things anytime is not a good thing. It is a good thing anytime. Listen, mowing the lawn anytime is a good thing. Encouraging somebody anytime is a good thing. Working hard at work anytime is a good thing. Uh, of course, no doubt about it. But we need to understand in our heads what the word sacrifice means. According to dictionary.com, sacrifice is to surrender or give up or permit injury or disadvantage to for the sake of something else. Whoa. When I read that, I was like, whoa. Permit injury or disadvantage to for the sake of something outside of ourselves. That's sacrifice. The Greek in Romans chapter 12 is thusia. One of the definitions that's in Thayer's Greek lexicon gives for this word, in addition to the word sacrifice, where it says, may, uh, Lord, I, where Paul says, I urge you to be a living sacrifice. The word thusia, another definition in the biblical lexicon is victim or Offering. <laughs> Man, whew. That's, that's weighty stuff, y'all. I urge you, therefore, to be a living sacrifice, an offer, a living offering, almost victim in a way. It, it, it is something that is not easy to do. Whoa. Psalm 51, as we get ready to conclude the introduction. <laughs> so like these medal winners, these congressional medal winners, how do you become a sacrifice and remain humble at the same time? Because that's what these people did. It, a lot of times people sacrifice and they're looking for recognition. They're looking for attention. They're looking for praise. They're looking for sometimes a response. Well, I helped you, so now you help me. I helped you, now it's your turn. I scratched your back, now you scratch my back. I helped you out when you were hurting, now you help me out. 
I, I, did this for, I did this for you. Aren't you going to recognize me? Or how about thanks? Maybe thanks is in order. A lot of people, when they make a sacrifice, that's their mindset. But there's, there's a certain lack of humility there. Did you hear what the Congressional Medal of Honor winners said? They said, listen, I don't even, I don't even deserve to be, I don't deserve to, to, to be recognized. I hear some of these guys, so watch some of these guys on, on YouTube say, I don't deserve this recognition. It's like, did you, guy, did you just hear the list of everything that you did? My God, if, if, if you don't deserve to be recognized, there's nobody in the world that deserves to be recognized. Yeah, you deserve to be recognized, brother or sister. But no, they have this attitude. No, I don't even deserve recognition. The real heroes, they often say, the real heroes are, are my buddy so-and-so and so that didn't make it home. They're the real heroes, not me. Man, the, what, what kind of humility is this? And they're, some, they're dog sincere, y'all. You know they are. Psalm 51, verse 19, part of David's repentance psalm. David says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. The key to offering ourselves as a sacrifice is for us to get us out of the way. It's hard. Why? Because our flesh wants what our flesh wants. The key to being a living sacrifice is for us to get us out of the way, to have a broken and contrite or humble heart. D David says that God will not despise this. That's an impressive promise. If we humble ourselves to God and sacrifice, God will not despise us. Even with all of your imperfection, even with all of your imperfections and fumbles and things that you do that are wrong and mistakes that you make, still, no, 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 no. If you've got this attitude, he will not despise you. No, he embraces you. You're going to make mistakes. All of us do. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> so if you're coming here today, if you're coming here today, watching online, listening via podcast, if you're coming here today with a genuine heart to draw closer to God, then take heed to this message. Each day, each day seek to be intentional in seeking to be more of a sacrifice in your life. You'll find that if you do so, if you really do so, you're gonna notice if you make a sacrifice today, you make a sacrifice tomorrow, you make, you make more sacrifices within your own life, you're gonna notice that you start to change. You start to, ch there will be a change in you. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm not even talking about a month or two from now, although it will have started. But I'm talking about five years from now. You'll be a different human being than you are today. And what better day is it than this to focus on laying down our lives for others? <laughs> the title of my message is Sacrifice. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Let's bow our heads. I want to ask if there's anybody here who's never said a prayer to receive Yeshua into your heart, if you've never given your life to God but you'd like to, I want to give you an opportunity. All you have to do is say a simple prayer. If that's you, just raise your hand and we'll pray together. If you've never said a prayer to receive Yeshua as your Messiah, but you want to today, just raise your hand and we'll pray. Is there anyone? Don't let anything get in your way. Perhaps you're watching online or listening via podcast. If that's you and you've never dedicated your life to the Lord, repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, dear God, I humble myself before you. I ask Yeshua to come into my heart. Lord, I believe he's risen again, sitting at your right hand. Please forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry. I'll live the rest of my days for you. Thank you, God. If you said that prayer for the first time, please send us an email. We want to celebrate with you if you're here see me after the service. We just want to celebrate with you. But God, I pray for our kahila, our congregation. Lord, I, 
we, we do have some wonderful people who are sacrificial, who, are, who live as a sacrifice. But God, all of us have room to grow. All of us have room to grow. How do I know that? All of us are still here, still breathing. And, and what is the standard? The standard is greater love is no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friend. Yeshua laid down his life for us. He says, let's be more like Yeshua. Well, we got to lay down our lives for each other. That's, that's the call, y'all. <laughs> so, Lord, help us be more sa- sacrificial, Lord. Give us opportunities to <laughs> allow us developmental growth in this area. <laughs> That was said like a performance appraisal. Lord, help us, Lord. Help us to to grow, to be more of a a sacrifice in our lives, oh God. Let us be more intentional in choosing to make sacrifices. And each day, Lord, as we make more sacrifices, let it then seep deep into our spirits so that we become a living sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, for these things. We bless you for them. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen and amen. I'd like to call up our cantor for the Aaronic benediction. Please rise. In Numbers 622, the Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you ought to bless the people of Israel. In this way, that to put my name on the people of Israel, so that I will bless them. Please, by your heads, to prepare to receive Adonai's blessing, the ironic benediction. Adonai, <clears throat> Ya eradnai panavlecha vichunecha Yisaradnai panavlecha viasemlecha Shalom Lord bless you and keep you Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. B'Shem Yeshu HaMashiach, Sa Shalom. Name of Messiah Yeshua, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Thanks to each of you who joined us for this Shabbat service, either here in person or visiting with us virtually. We're going to end our service now with a closing song. And afterward, we welcome you to stay and schmooze with each other. And we hope the remainder of your Shabbat is full of the rest and the love of the Lord. For those of you who need prayer, please feel free to put a written prayer request in the boxes up front. If you're watching online, you can click the link in the description box below. Next week, share the blessing of Shabbat. Invite a Jewish friend. Invite all your friends to attend or watch our service on YouTube. It's as easy as sharing a link. Shabbat shalom, y'all.